have with us today, yes, 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 we do have the Arthur, Miss Dina Levin on the line with us. That website, like we told you guys earlier, head on over, dinalevin.com, that's D-E-N-A-L-E-V-I-N.com, and grab up the copy of her book, The Unexpected Connection. And people, we are not only going to make sure that you have all the info you need to be sure that you not only can get that book, but you can make the connection with the Arthur. We're also going to be able to tap you into some info that can help you achieve the things that you want to achieve, especially if you want to do like Dina did and defy the odds, baby. So Mrs. Levin, thank you so much for coming on, number one. Number two, Thank you for being you and for setting the example and being so exemplary, letting people know that no matter what age you are, you can always still accomplish any goal that you have as long as you are willing to do what needs to be done because you definitely are capable of getting it done. Congratulations on everything that you've gotten achieved. And my first question out of the door for you is you. how were you able to make this happen, especially at a time when people are saying they can't even deliver your mail on time because of COVID? So how did you publish a book during a time of COVID? Well, the book actually, that book was published before COVID, but then it was sort of on ice because of COVID, and now it's blossoming. And I'll tell you a little secret. I came back from Egypt, and a week later, this is the beginning of March 2020, I came down with COVID. I was hospitalized and almost died. I was like number 25 in all of New York. So I was on hold, and now I'm blossoming. And my book, my book really, well, the message of the book is no matter what obstacle you have in life, you address it. You live in the moment. Mm -hmm. You do the best that you can. And really, that's what got me. That philosophy got me through to today, to be perfectly honest. Yes, and it definitely shows. And I am so thankful that you were blessed to be able to be healed from that experience and to come out of it even more vigilant and even more dedicated to living the life that you know you truly are called to do and to make sure that people know the truth about how they too have options. They don't have to believe the hype that says what you see is what you get. You know, so I am so thankful for that. And you were saying how the whole, your whole premise of the book, The Unexpected Connection, which again, people, head over to her website and get that the whole premise is letting them know, hey, don't run away, don't cower, don't try to avoid, face it, and then move forward from it fully capable and, and enabled and knowing that there are things you can do and so just do it. How, was, how long had you, I would say, been aware of the power of courage um, or is that something that you learn later in life? Or, you know, how, how long have you, I would say, walked that vigilant path? Well, I, I always had the backbone. But about 15 years ago, maybe 15 and a half years ago, my yeah. husband, who was a dentist, died in a car accident. And five hours later, my mother passed. So that I realized then that I had to deal with those tragedies, heal, and then move forward. And really, that's the way I've led my life ever wow. since. Yes. And, and that's really, I believe, what motivated me to write the unexpected connection and to share my philosophy of life. And it took me a while to figure out how I would do that. And ultimately it came to me because I always loved the great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. Yeah. And 
I love that he used Nick as the narrator and told Gatsby's story. So that's why my book is really about a transgenerational friendship where Vanessa Millennial meets Michelle, a baby boomer, and they discover they have so much in common, and Michelle shares a memoir that she wrote, and the memoir is a vehicle for them to discuss what it's like to be in the dating world, but not even just in the dating world, to face challenges in life. And how do you overcome them and keep yourself with self-respect and with love? Yeah. Yeah. And that is definitely a relevant story, you know, not only for the trans community, but any community, you know. Um, even well, this wasn't the trans, trans this one, I'm not talking about, I'm sorry for interrupting you, not the trans oh, no, community, okay. trans generation. She oh, was a okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yes, uh-huh, no, yes I across just wanted, multi- I just wanted to correct that. Yes. Yes, yes, intergenerational. Yes, right, yes, intergenerational, yes. 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 Very good. Very good. And so, um, and 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 definitely, yes. This story truly is one where it it does show that it's not just relegated to just one segment of the population. It truly is an experience that, no matter what a person's background, no matter um, what a person's experiences, this is truly one of those experiences that anyone can relate to. You know, we all have the coming of age phases of life. And honestly, you know, depending on, um, because we know each person's individual development, some people have multiple coming of ages phases in their lives that, you know, involve various experiences, um, especially those where it's a matter of, you know, that self-awareness, self-acceptance, um, even facing things that some people may consider um, unacceptable, um, but you have to accept that if that really is you and your desire, then that's for you. But, you know, definitely may not be everyone else, but at least know and walk in the fact it's you. And and with saying that, you know, I can't help but face the, you know, the running theme that I'm constantly seeing is, you know, just facing it, you know, facing it, facing it, no matter what, um, and no matter with whom, and no matter at what time, it's just facing it. And I can't help but think about how with your being a senior, and there's so much tacit knowledge that you have that you've been able to, I'm sure, pass on to the people who are in your circle and those people who are learning from you and your relatives, as well as, of course, there are still things that you're still learning. What is there, um, you know, with, of course, the changing in culture and society and technology the same way, you know, those of us who are um, in the millennials and the Generation Xs and the various other ones, you know, are still learning and transitioning with it. What is there, because I'm sure that just like I just celebrated my 48th year living, and so I have noticed that there seems to be here within these past few months, and maybe it's because people are finally listening to COVID, I don't know, but I've noticed this extra, not just an anxiety in the air, but there seems to be this, ugh, it's, it's a negative element where people seem more careless, um, more selfish, more inconsiderate. It's, 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 a, it's not, it's, um, uh, for people who feel like now that things are opening up and it seems like they're seeing more and more negative elements from society and, you know, especially coming out of all these other things, they may feel like, hey, maybe I should just stay quarantined and I shouldn't even be coming outside at all, you know, because these people are nuts. Um, What would you say to them to kind of help them see how you've seen how people have been nuts all your life too, you know, and that, no, they still have to live despite how other people are, but they just have to, you know, be safe and, you know, use. So what would you say to them to help them not run back inside? Well, the way, let me just connect it to the book. 
a little bit, and then I, yes. I'll be able to answer the question. Okay, so the book is about two females who both are looking for male companions, and it's through their interactions that they learn about themselves and learn that they have to stand up for who they are. And the way I wrote the book, I there were a lot of stories about different interactions that were based on interactions. I had interactions with young teachers that I worked with because by profession I'm a speech language pathologist and worked in a high school. I was the oldest person in the building and I was dating because I was left a widow and that gave me the commonality to share my stories and they share the young people share their stories and I still have those friendships. So you're talking about how do we get out of this? I think it's very important to make connections. Connecting with people, finding people who have common interests, common passions, and to, sh to open up and share their feelings. And even when, it, it was interesting because I saw I, I, Bill Maher, and he was m making a joke out of the fact that now that in California, people can come out June 15th and do everything that they've done in the past. They made a joke about what it's going to be like to <laughs> date. I mean, it was hysterical. It was very funny. But the idea is, yes, we're, we're getting over COVID, and, and we, we have to live in the moment and en enjoy life in the moment. You know, we, we all know where we want to head, but it's the road that we travel that will get us there. And that's my recommendation. That's how I believe I've gotten through life. You know that I, I work at improving myself, having nice interactions with people, and also caring about people. That yeah. has always been something that has been very important to me. I've written two children's books, one, Let Me Kind Again, and the other one, um, Why Is Everything Different? They're, they're in publication now. They're, they're the publishers working on the illustrations. But they even said, I care about people. I guess I've always philosophized. And really, even though my book is, a, you know, it's funny, I tell the stories and, and, and give each incident the male a pseudonym, like the Mad Kappa or the Karate Man or whatever. I, I make it light and funny. I never, ever denigrate men because that's not important, you know, what I want to do. Instead, I aim for women to just be strong because look, we listen to the news and, and what women go through. And the whole idea is we have to respect ourselves and be strong. Yes. Yes. I so agree. And, and, and I would take it a step further and say not only women need to do that because as a black woman, I have seen too often, and even just recently was talking to some friends about how I need for even black men to quit being so fearful, quit being so right. full of cowardice, because why are you always running? You know, you're I agree. Not, and not all of them, because we know nothing is absolute, but in the cases where we do see where even the man does not face his responsibility or take accountability and tries to run away from the accountability, how it could get even worse. And now someone else is also not doing what they're supposed to do. And now they too are trying to thwart accountability. So it's, it's just this whole thing, you know, so I really believe wholeheartedly that it all starts with the way you are, because the, you can only teach what you know. And if 
your parents are that way, um, just the same way like when people say, um, oh, you know, children are not um, born racist, and I'm and I totally disagree. You know, because we all know information is in DNA, and if you know that you have a racist daddy or a racist mother, then your DNA is already coated with racist thoughts. And unless you're willing to face them and address it and be like, you know what, I do say all white people are like this or all black people are like this or all Latin people are like this instead of saying the ones I've run into or the ones who did this to me, you know, but, um, but it's, it's just funny the way we humans are. And, and I want to ask you this for those who some are already like, you know what, I already know that her book, not only, and even the children's books of yours, that they want to get those. So, and I know that you said that the children's books are, you know, currently in production and people already know that they can go over to dinalevin.com right now and grab up your current book, The Unexpected Connection. But for those who are like, look, you know, I already know um, I want to connect with her even more. I want to read her book, yes, but I feel like she has more wisdom to give me than she's been able to put in these books, or these books may not come out fast enough, and I need to ask her a question myself. Um, for those people who want to connect with you, make the face-to-face, -face, do you have any upcoming events where you'll be, whether it's a virtual event where you'll be doing a Zoom or whether you have a in-person event where people can get their books autographed, do you have anything on tap where people can come in and meet you and have a chance to, you know, dialogue with you directly or um, Not at over this Zoom? moment. I'm working on it, you know, because of the pandemic, you know, and especially in New York, it was. It's been very difficult to arrange yeah. that. To be perfectly honest, very yeah. difficult. But um, people could get in touch with me on Facebook, and I will respond to them. Or um, Instagram, Twitter, my web page. But it, I, it, I want to just add something. It'll be because you hit the nail on the head when you said that this philosophy that I'm espousing is a philosophy, whether it's a male, a female, a Caucasian, a black, brown person, an Asian, doesn't matter because it's. Yeah. In, I just have to tell you that before the, my book came out, I had written a play, Keep Walking, and that had four stage mm. readings. And it was similar to the book in the respect that it it, it, it was a fun kind of play of, of a woman going out and dating and the men that she met and how she was treated. After the play, first of all, a 40-year-old actor came up to me and said, now I know that I've been treating women the wrong way and I'm going to treat them differently. And wow. a 40-year-old, listen to this, a gay man came up to me and said, I just came out. And he said, that's the way I've been treated. And now I know that I am going to be strong and respect myself and not let myself be denigrated. So yeah. it's, it's important for all of us, no matter, wh no matter what kind of, situation one is in because there's so much adversity in our lives these days that yes, we, we, all, we have to be positive and move forward. Yes, yes, I'm with you. And that's why I don't understand. Well, you know, what, instead of my saying what I don't understand, let me, maybe you can help me understand and even the listeners because that's one of the main things where I'm like, if you feel like, and, and you not only you feel like, but you know for a fact from your own experiences that most people in this world automatically mistreat you and even the moment they see you, they feel a negative way. If you already know most people mistreat you, why would you mistreat yourself and why would you give up on yourself because you are all you have? Why would you, can you, in any kind of tips that you can give for people who are out there and they are so downtrodden to where they really are 
They've given up on themselves. They're suicidal. They think, what would you say to them? Because I have never had the right word to them because I've always felt like you're supposed to have your own back, especially if you feel like everyone else has turned on you. How dare you turn on you to you owe it to you, not nobody else. But that doesn't always work for people. Some people, you know, but so what words will you t- say to those people who feel like they've just been so beat down by life and so downtrodden by life that they can't even really be the, their real selves or can't even be happy or stand up for what they believe or, you know, they just, they they don't even want to, they don't even know if they can make it through the next 10 minutes. What would you say to kind of encourage them to keep going and to stand up for themselves because they really are all they have at the end of the day? No, it's, it's very true. I'm not a therapist. So that's, you know, it's a very difficult question that you ask me. I just know that, yes, I have met people that, I have felt uncomfortable with, I've, especially dating and speaking to other women who were dating and how they were treated, and I've learned that I have to step back and remember who I am and, yes. and think about all the good qualities and my successes because yes. we have all along the way have successes, and we have to dwell on those successes and then move forward. That's mm-hmm. how I live my life. But, but I, I'm not a therapist, so I can't, you know, I, what I'm telling you is based on how I've led my life. And, yes. how, you know, and another thing, I'm, as a speech pathologist, I was working in a high school with minority kids, and... I worked with the whole student, not just teaching them language and, you know, and reading and writing, but I I worked on who they were and that they have good within themselves and they're capable. And I had students who graduated high school who still, who still seek me out and I invite them for lunch and yes. they ask my advice and I encourage them. And, and maybe that's what people need also, mentors, you know? Yes. Um, people that, they, that individuals can relate to and grow together because I, it just warms my heart when I think about some of the students that really had a lot of adversities in their lives and they allowed me they, to share, the, you know, to share their lives and and they trust me. And it, yes. as I say, it, I, I'm not a therapist. It's just well, no, but it's I have because this of the philosophy fact that you... of life. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, you so have I, a philosophy of life that you. Mm-hmm. Did I answer your question? I don't know. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. And and that's the whole thing is you know often we feel like because we don't have certain degrees or you know certain um, letters behind our names or in front of them that we're not in a position to really give the advice that could make a difference. But no, the only thing that any of us can do again, you know, like I even said before. We can only teach what we know. And a lot of times, you know, people need to hear something different or, you know, hear about because maybe the experiences that I can speak from are ones to which they cannot relate. And thus, you know, the assistance I'm hoping to give is not able to actually be effective. Whereas, of course, if someone speaks about that same thing and they speak, present other experiences um, as options, then maybe that will be able to get through. And I do believe that while, yes, we acknowledge, no, you're not a therapist, but we do know that you are a person who has lived. You have had more experiences than I have. You have a lot of not only knowledge, but you also have wisdom. And yes, ma'am, there is plenty that you can still teach to the young folks out there and to the people that are in your peer group especially for those people who have given up on themselves when you know for a fact 
you had a chance to do that, but you persevered. You got, you pushed through, and since then, you've been making sure other people push through. And that's how I knew that, no, nah, uh, nah, we need to hear some push through from you before I'm forced to have to let you go because, oh, my gosh, it's so many other questions I want to ask you. Uh, but I uh, well, I'll come back it's another like, time. <laughs> yes, that, that was another good. Time. People, I, I really think that because even the way she – made it clear you got to get this book and I got to get this book as well the unexpected connection Dina Levin head over to her website dinalevin.com and of course yeah for those of you who are like oh well I don't trust buying stuff on the internet I have to go to my local mom and pop shop you know Mogadishu do that do that get it from your local bookstore get it anywhere you want go ahead Dina what were you saying you can get the book on Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or Archway Publishing. Those are the ways to purchase the book. So, people, you see, you all have options. No matter where you are in this entire world, you can buy her book. Even if you are not able to go over to Dean11.com, you can still go over to these other places. Be sure to grab up that book. But in the meantime, listeners, what we're going to do, since Miss Levin said that she will be willing to come back, we are going to, number one, celebrate the fact that, yes, we will be having her back. But in the meantime, we are going to make sure that we go over, we buy her book right now. After the book arrives, people, and you read that book, you make it a point to go back to her website or to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, wherever you bought it from. Head right back to that site and drop your comment, drop your review. If it's on Amazon or whatever, leave those stars as well as leave the review because, people, it matters to us. And don't feel like, oh, you know, only if I'm going to say a certain thing. No, we want your honest feedback because – Again, you know, any kind of support is definitely appreciated, but the main thing is is that I'm sure you all feel the same way I feel, that within this is a story. Yes, this is a novel, and yes, it says it's a novel, but as you all know, this is a novel with real-life lessons and real-life principles that you can apply to make not only your life better, but to make your being better more fortified because that's what you need, people, and that's what you want. It's no reason to keep cowering, to keep running, to keep feeling beaten down, to keep allowing yourself to be beat down when you know for a fact life is full of surprises, and most of the surprises in life are actually good. So don't fear the unknown. Dive right on into it, lean into it, and don't feel like you need to alter who you know you really are. Embrace who you are, shine and show who you are, because how else can you truly expect for someone to really call you a friend or call you a love when you know you're not even showing them the real you? So do they even know the real you? So Make sure you're genuine, make sure you're authentic, and make sure that you always stand up for you because no matter how many people are in your circle, how many people live with you, you are the only one with you 24-7. You are the one responsible for what it is that you go through on a daily basis. You're the one responsible. And if you need some help, Dina Levin's book, as well as her children's books that are coming out, as well as the fact that she's generally there For you guys, I'm sure if you drop a comment on her website, a question, she's going to help you because, as you know, that's naturally in her. And that was why I even followed my spirit and asked her some of the questions that I knew you all wanted to know because it's in her. And so people call her. She still has love and care for you all. She wants to help you as much as she can so that you can be just as free and just as fortified as she is because life has so many beautiful surprises for you, so many unexpected connections that are wonderful and amazing, and we want you to embrace them. So head on over to Dean11.com right now. Get your manual, baby, The Unexpected Connection. Grab up that novel and keep your ears and eyes peeled for her children's books that are coming out. Ms. Levin, thank you so much for your time, and may God continue blessing you and every single thing that you do. And we look forward to having you back when those children's books come out, each one of them, okay? And okay. if you have an event, thank we want you to come back and talk about the event, too. 
Oh, I would love to. It, it was just so wonderful interacting with you, Goddess Sage. You're a wonderful you. inspiration, a wonderful lady. Thank you so much. Thank you. And listeners, you all stay safe.